a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Lavrenti Beria Lavrenti Pavlovich Beria was a Soviet politician of Georgian ethnicity, Marshal of the Soviet Union and State Security Administrator, Chief of the Soviet Security and Secret Police Apparatus under Joseph Stalin during World War II, and promoted to Deputy Premier under Stalin from 1941. He later officially joined the Politburo in 1946. Beria was the longest-lived and most influential of Stalin's secret police chiefs, wielding his most substantial influence during and after World War II. He simultaneously administered vast sections of the Soviet state and acted as the de facto marshal of the Soviet Union in command of NKVD field units responsible for barrier troops and Soviet partisan intelligence and sabotage operations on the Eastern Front during World War II. Beria administered the vast expansion of the Gulag labor camps, and was primarily responsible for overseeing the secret detention facilities for scientists and engineers known as Sharashkas. He attended the Yalta Conference with Stalin, who introduced him to U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt as a Himmler. After the war, he organized the communist takeover of the state institutions of Central and Eastern Europe and political repressions in these countries. Beria's uncompromising ruthlessness in his duties and skill at producing results culminated in his success in overseeing the Soviet atomic bomb project. Stalin gave it absolute priority, and the project was completed in under five years mostly due to Soviet espionage against the West. Upon Stalin's death in March 1953, Beria was promoted to first deputy premier. He was briefly a part of the ruling Troika with Georgi Molinkov and Vyacheslav Molotov during the coup d'état led by Nikita Khrushchev and assisted by the military forces of Marshal Georgi Zhukov. Beria was arrested on charges of treason. Zhukov's troops ensured NKVD compliance, and on the 23rd of December 1953, he was executed by Pavel Bertitsky. Early life and rise to power. Beria was born in Merkuli, near Sokomi, in the Sukhumokrug of the Kite Governorate. He was from the Mingrelian sub-ethnic group of Georgians, and grew up in a Georgian Orthodox family. Beria's mother, Marta Jakalai, was deeply religious and church-going. She was previously married and widowed before marrying Beria's father, Pavel Kukivich Beria, a landowner from Abkhazia. He also had a brother, and a deaf sister named Anna. In his autobiography, Lavrenti Beria mentioned only his sister and his niece, implying that his brother either was dead or had no relationship with Beria after he left Merkuli. Beria attended a technical school in Sokomi, and joined the Bolsheviks in March 1917 while a student in the Baku Polytechnicum. As a student, Beria distinguished himself in mathematics and the sciences. The Polytechnicum's curriculum concentrated on the petroleum industry. Beria also worked for the anti-Bolshevik Musavitists in Baku. After the Red Army captured the city on 28 April 1920, Beria was saved from execution, because there was not enough time to arrange his shooting and replacement, and Sergei Kirov possibly intervened. While in prison, he formed a connection with Nina Zizek Kori his cellmate's niece, and they eloped on a train. She was 17, a trained scientist, from an aristocratic family. In 1919, at the age of 20, Beria started his career in state security, when the security service of the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic hired him while still a student at the Polytechnicum. In 1920, or 1921 Beria joined the Chika, the original Bolshevik secret police. At that time, a Bolshevik revolt took place in the Menshevik-controlled Democratic Republic of Georgia, and the Red Army subsequently invaded. The Chika became heavily involved in the conflict which resulted in the defeat of the Mensheviks and the formation of the Georgian SSR. By 1922, Beria was deputy head of the Georgian branch of Cheka's successor, the Opu. In 1924 he led the repression of a Georgian nationalist uprising, after which up to 10,000 people were executed. For this display of Bolshevik ruthlessness, Beria was appointed head of the secret political division of the Transcaucasian Oak Poo and was awarded the Order of the Red Banner. In 1926 Beria became head of the Georgian Oak Poo. Sergo Ordzonikides, head of the Transcaucasian Party, introduced him to fellow Georgian Joseph Stalin. As a result, Beria became an ally in Stalin's rise to power. 
During his years at the helm of the Georgian Okbu, Beryl effectively destroyed the intelligence networks that Turkey and Iran had developed in the Soviet Caucasus, while successfully penetrating the governments of these countries with his agents. He also took over Stalin's holiday security. Beria was appointed secretary of the Communist Party in Georgia in 1931, and for the whole Transcaucasian region in 1932. He became a member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in 1934. During this time, he began to attack fellow members of the Georgian Communist Party, particularly Georgiev Daryoni, who served as Minister of Education of the Georgian SSR. Beria ordered the executions of Divdaryani's brothers Georgian Shalva, who held important positions in the Chika and the Communist Party respectively. By 1935 Beria had become one of Stalin's most trusted subordinates. He cemented his place in Stalin's entourage with a lengthy oration titled on the history of the Bolshevik organizations in Transcaucasia, which emphasized Stalin's role. When Stalin's purge of the Communist Party and government began in 1934 after the assassination of Leningrad party boss Sergei Kirov, Beria ran the purges in Transcaucasia. He used the opportunity to settle many old scores in the politically turbulent Transcaucasian republics. In June 1937 he said in a speech, let our enemies know that anyone who attempts to raise a hand against the will of our people, against the will of the party of Lenin and Stalin, will be mercilessly crushed and destroyed. Head of the NKVD In August 1938, Stalin brought Beria to Moscow as deputy head of the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs, the ministry which oversaw the state security and police forces. Under Nikolai Yezhov, the NKVD carried out the Great Purge, the imprisonment or execution of millions of people throughout the Soviet Union as alleged enemies of the people. By 1938, however, the oppression had become so extensive that it was damaging the infrastructure, economy and even the armed forces of the Soviet state, prompting Stalin to wind the purge down. Stalin had thoughts to appoint Lazar Kaganovich as head of the NKVD, but chose Beria probably, because he was a professional secret policeman. In September, Beria was appointed head of the main administration of state security of the NKVD, and in November he succeeded Yezhov as NKVD head. The NKVD was purged next, with half its personnel replaced by Beria loyalists, many of them from the Caucasus. He reportedly won Stalin's favor in the early 1930s after faking a conspiracy to assassinate the Soviet leader that he then claimed to have foiled. In 1938 Stalin rewarded Beria's loyalty by making him head of the NKVD. One account says Beria personally strangled his predecessor, Nikolai Yezhov. Although Beria's name is closely identified with the Great Purge, because of his activities while deputy head of the NKVD, his leadership of the organization marked an easing of the repression begun under Yezhov. Over 100,000 people were released from the labor camps. The government officially admitted that there had been some injustice and excesses during the purges, which were blamed entirely on Yezhov. The liberalization was only relative, arrests and executions continued, and in 1940, as war approached, the pace of the purges again accelerated. During this period, Beria supervised deportations of people identified as political enemies from Poland and the Baltic states after Soviet occupation of those regions. In March 1939, Beria became a candidate member of the Communist Party's Politburo, although he did not become a full member until 1946. He was already one of the senior leaders of the Soviet state. In 1941 Beria was made a Commissar General of State Security the highest quasi-military rank within the Soviet police system at that time, effectively comparable to a marshal of the Soviet Union. On 5 March 1940, after the Gestapo NKVD Third Conference was held in Zakopane, Beria sent a note to Stalin in which he stated that the Polish prisoners of war kept at camps and prisons in western Belarus and Ukraine were enemies of the Soviet Union, and recommended their execution. Most of them were military officers, but there were also intelligentsia, doctors, priests and others in a total of more than 22,000 people. With Stalin's approval, Beria's NKVD executed them in what became known as the Cut-In Massacre. From October 1940 to February 1942, the NKVD under Beria carried out a new purge of the Red Army and related industries. In February 1941, 
Beria became deputy chairman of the Council of People's Commissars, and in June, following Nazi Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union, he became a member of the State Defense Committee. During World War II, he took on major domestic responsibilities, and mobilized the millions of people imprisoned in NKVD Gulag camps into wartime production. He took control of the manufacture of armaments, and aircraft and aircraft engines. This was the beginning of Beria's alliance with Mollenkov, which later became of central importance. In 1944, as the Germans were driven from Soviet soil, Beria was in charge of dealing with the various ethnic minorities accused of anti-Sovietism and or collaboration with the invaders, including the Balkars, the Karachays, the Chechens, the Ingush, the Crimean Tatars, the Pontic Greeks and the Volga Germans. All these groups were deported to Soviet Central Asia in December 1944. Beria's NKVD was assigned to supervise the Soviet atomic bomb project, which built and tested a bomb. By the 29th of August 1949, the project was extremely labor-intensive. At least 330,000 people, including 10,000 technicians, were involved. The Gulag system provided tens of thousands of people for work in uranium mines and for the construction and operation of uranium processing plants. They also constructed test facilities, such as those at Semipalatinsk and in the Novaya Zemlya archipelago. The NKVD also ensured the necessary security for the project. In July 1945, as Soviet police ranks were converted to a military uniform system, Beria's rank was officially converted to that of Marshal of the Soviet Union. Although he had never held a traditional military command, Beria made a significant contribution to the victory of the Soviet Union in World War II through his organization of wartime production and his use of partisans. Stalin personally never thought much of it and neither commented publicly on his performance nor awarded him recognition as he did for most other Soviet marshals. Abroad, Beria had met with Kim Il-sung, the future leader of North Korea, several times when the Soviet troops had declared war on Japan and occupied the northern half of Korea from August 1945. Beria recommended that Stalin install a communist leader in the occupied territories. Post-war politics With Stalin nearing 70, a concealed struggle for succession amongst his entourage dominated Kremlin politics in the post-war years. At the end of the war and Ray Zdanov seemed the most likely candidate. Zdanov had served as the Communist Party leader in Leningrad during the war, and by 1946 had charge of all cultural matters. After 1946 Beria formed an alliance with Molenkov to counter Zdanov's rise. In January 1946 Beria resigned as chief of the NKVD while retaining general control of national security matters as deputy prime minister and curator of the organs of state security under Stalin. However, the new NKVD chief, Sergei Kruglov, was not a Beria man. Also, by the summer of 1946, Beria's man of Sevalod Nikolaevich Merkulov was replaced as head of the Ministry for State Security by Viktor Abakumov. Abakumov had headed Smush from 1943 to 1946. His relationship with Beria involved close collaboration, but also rivalry. Stalin had begun to encourage Abakumov to form his own network inside the MGB to counter Beria's dominance of the power ministries. Kruglov, and Abakumov moved expeditiously to replace Beria's men in the security apparatus leadership with new people. Very soon Deputy Minister Stepan Mamulov of the Soviet Ministry of Internal Affairs was the only close Beria ally left outside foreign intelligence, on which Beria kept a grip. In the following months, Abakumov started carrying out important operations without consulting Beria, often working in tandem with Zdanov, and on Stalin's direct orders. These operations were aimed by Stalin initially tangentially, but, with time more directly at Beria. One of the first such moves involved the Jewish anti-fascist committee affair that commenced in October 1946, and eventually led to the murder of Solomon Mikhoas and the arrest of many other members. This affair damaged Beria. Not only had he championed the creation of the committee in 1942, but his own entourage included a substantial number of Jews. After Zdanov died suddenly in August 1948, Beria and Molenkov consolidated their power by a purge of Zdanov's associates in the so-called Leningrad Affair. Those executed included Zdanov's deputy, Alexei Kuznetsov, the economic chief, Nikolai Vosensensky, the party head in Leningrad, Pyotr Popkov, 
and the Prime Minister of the Russian Republic, Mikhail Rodionov. During the post-war years, Beria supervised installation of communist regimes in the countries of Eastern Europe and hand-picked the Soviet-backed leaders. Starting in 1948, Abakamov initiated several investigations against these leaders, which culminated with the arrest in November 1951 of Rudolf Slansky, Budrik Jemander, and others in Czechoslovakia. These men were frequently accused of Zionism, cosmopolitanism and providing weapons to Israel. Such charges deeply disturbed Beria, as he had directly ordered the sale of large amounts of Czech arms to Israel. Altogether, 14 Czechoslovak communist leaders, 11 of them Jewish, were tried, convicted, and executed. Similar investigations in Poland, and other Soviet satellite countries occurred at the same time. In 1951 Abakamov was replaced by Semyon Ignatyev, who further intensified the anti-Semitic campaign. On 13 January 1953 the biggest anti-Semitic affair in the Soviet Union started. With an article in Pravda it began what became known as the Doctor's Plot, in which a number of the country's prominent Jewish physicians were accused of poisoning top Soviet leaders and arrested. Concurrently, an anti-Semitic propaganda campaign, euphemistically termed the struggle against rootless cosmopolitanism, was ordered in the Soviet press. Initially, 37 men were arrested, but the number quickly grew into hundreds. Scores of Soviet Jews were dismissed from their jobs, arrested, sent to the Gulag, or executed. At this time Stalin made orders for the MGB to prepare to deport all Soviet Jews to the Russian Far East, but the plans have been abandoned after death of Stalin. The doctor's plot was presumably started by Stalin to dismiss Beria and replace him by Ignatiev or other MGB functionaries. Days after Stalin's death on 5 March 1953, Beria freed all the arrested doctors, announced that the entire matter was fabricated, and arrested the MGB functionaries directly involved. In other international issues, Beria correctly foresaw the victory of Mao Zedong in the Chinese Civil War and greatly helped the Chinese Communists' success by letting the Communist Party of China use Soviet-occupied Manchuria as a staging area and arranging large weapons shipments to the People's Liberation Army, mainly from the recently captured equipment of the Japanese Kwantung Army. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like